Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to a new video again. This time we are going to have a look at Manjaro 20.2 Nibia and in particular at the GNOME version, which is the version that has received a lot of updates. So without further ado, let's get going. So here we are on the welcome screen for Manjaro 20.2 Nibia. Before we get started here, let me pull up the notes, the release notes, and let's have a look here what's new. So in this video anyway, I'm going to focus on the GNOME version because it's the one that has the most updates according to the release notes. And as you can see here, the name Nibia comes again from Star Trek. This one particularly is a planet with multiple moons, and it tells you when it appears in the Star Trek world. Now let's have a look at the feature we have on GNOME. As it says here, the GNOME edition is the epicenter of new exciting features. It received a major overhaul, possibly the biggest update thus far. And I've been trying this now for a couple of days and I can only agree with this. It provides performance enhancement, significantly improves application grid, parental controls, excellent welcome tour, as well as many other features. We have also a new Manjaro utility application that we will look in a second. And we have also new the pop shell and also the friendly touch material shell. After the installation, they will appear up here right now where it's also already in the bar here in the ISO. We have also new key bindings for the virtual desktops. The automatic dark mode has gained more granular controls. We have also a new boot splash as it says here. And then probably one of the most important points is that the desktop have been trimmed so that it should now show approximately 40% less RAM than before, which is actually a quite significant step. And also they use now Wayland as a default on non-NVIDIA hardware. So I'm actually going to install this very quickly because the installation method changed slightly here in Manjaro for the GNOME desktop environment. So let me close the release notes here and let's open up the Calamares installer, which has been also improved by the way. And let's go ahead and click next after the language. And here we can select our disk. So I'm installing this on a virtual machine just to show you. And I have only one disk here, which is called VDA. In my case, I'm just going to erase the disk here and install the default. And I'm going to select here swap with no hibernation. And I'm not going to encrypt this and I'm just going to click next. Now, this is basically it. So that's the summary of the installation. We can click install and then install now. And the rest is going to be done once Manjaro is installed, basically. So I'll meet you back here in a second when the installation is finished. So here we go. The installation is now done. So we can click restart now and click done. And the machine is going to reboot in a second. So there you go. That's the new boot splash screen that we see. And we are back now in the GNOME desktop environment. Now, it's going to appear here now. There you go. This is the welcome screen. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's click next for the language. My keyboard layout here, I will choose the one I have, which is always the Swiss keyboard and click next. I will leave location services as they are. And for the time zone here, I'm going to select my city, which is Basel and then click next. I'm going to skip online accounts for now. And now I can create my username. So I'll just put my name here. And the username is going to be just my name. And I don't need to create parental controls here. So I'm just going to click next and create my password and then retype it. And we can now click next. Start using Manjaro. There you go. So the setup is basically now done. And we have now the tour, which we can do in a second. But before, let me actually adjust the screen resolution because you will see better what's going on on the screen. So let me do this very quickly and click apply here and keep the changes. There you go. That's much nicer. So let's start the tour. So as you can see, open activities to launch apps. We know this, but it's nice to have anyway this for new users. Click next here. We have the same just type to search. So basically we just hit the mod key here and type to search. Next, click the time to see notifications, which are right here and click next we have view system informations and settings which is this panel right here and we have also use adrem of software to find and install apps this is going to use the pamac software and here we can change also the desktop layouts with layout switcher i'm going to show you this afterwards let's click next here and the last point that's it we hope that you enjoy manjaro linux so let's click close 
and this is the new GNOME desktop for Manjaro 20.2. So the first impression when you open up the desktop here is that it's very polished. We have here Dash to Dock, which is appearing here on the left side. This is one of the layouts available in this edition of Manjaro. I will show you later how you can change this. If you want to change them right away, you can also click here on the GNOME Layouts Manager button. I can see here we have the Matcha C theme from Manjaro on the top bar here. That means the user themes extensions is already available here. And we have also, I see here, the colors also for the icons. If we open up the file manager, you can see we have the typical Manjaro scheme here. One thing to notice here, we have these two extra icons here that are not normally in the default installation of GNOME. This is the pop shell, which will allow us to have the tiling windows. And the other icon here is the icon for the package manager. We're going to look both in a second. Now we have the dock here. As I said, this is dash to dock is an extension that Manjaro has already pre-installed. And let's have a look here what's inside the distribution. So let's click here on the all applications. And let's see for system tools here, we have several system tools. Of course, we have here the Manjaro notifier settings. Let's scroll down to the next page here. We have the software update. We have the firewall configuration. This is the UWF firewall, if I'm not mistaken. And it's coming also with its GUI, which is right here. And right now it's actually deactivated. So we can turn it on by clicking this button here. There you go. And let's go back to our applications here. We have here the Manjaro settings where we can change our kernel. And that's basically it for system tools. Under accessories, we have a few tools like transmission, the weather, the usual tools here. We have also GNOME tweaks, which is already pre-installed. And we have also caffeine for performance boost, which is also already pre-installed. And we have all other utilities here for your firmware. We have also backups. This is Deja Dupe, actually. So here we have basically two backup programs. One is backups and the other one is time shift. And we have, of course, our screenshot tool and our calculator. We have also here Office installed. This comes pre-installed actually with only Office. So if you want to have LibreOffice, you will have to go ahead and install that yourself. We have also an application called Web Apps. Well, this is actually what it does. You basically can create here your own web apps. And you just click the plus here, give a name to this and put the address. I try this with Gmail, for example, and it works perfectly. The icon will be changed directly to Gmail. You can select the category, the browser that you're using. And if you want to have also the navigation bar and click OK, and this application will appear then in your dock. So it's a very handy feature to have. So let's go back here to our application. We have Firefox as a default browser, Giri as a default email client, and we have our document scanner, our videos, some other programs here for photo editing. We have the Manjero user guide, our file manager, the GNOME maps, and also our PAMAC software, which we're going to look in a second. I skipped this because we're going to look at this now. So here we have our layouts manager. So you can see here we have six different layouts that we can choose from. Right now we have the Manjero layout, which is the one we see here. And we have also the traditional ones. So if we click traditional and click apply, you can see we have a more Windows look like. So we have basically the applications down here with the programs here. We can scroll through them and we can click one of these to start them up. We have also the Unity layout when we click apply here. And you can see how it looks like when we click the button here, we have a more Unity-like style. We have the modern style here, which puts basically the dock on the button. And of course, you can always right click here and change the dash to dock settings if you want to do that. We have the vanilla GNOME layout. If you click apply here, this is the typical vanilla GNOME layout here. You can see the dock on the side and the virtual desktops here. And we have also a tiling mode here if you like this kind of layouts. So you basically have a full window here and you can open up new tabs on the top. Well, let me go back here and I'll go back to the Manjaro layout and I will close here the window for now and close this button. Now you can see what happened here before we had this button on the button here because we changed layout, it changed the position. No worry there, we can click the settings and go to launchers and we can uncheck this button here, move the applications button at the beginning of the dock. And we have our button here at the bottom again. Now let's have a look at the shell. Now the terminal is the GNOME terminal, but the shell used here is the Z shell. So if I type in echo dollar sign shell, and hit enter, 
you can see we are using the Z shell. Now, I'm not sure which theme they are using here, but it's nice to have the Z shell here with many plugins like auto completions and corrections. If I type in here, for example, sudo, you can see auto suggestions are already there. And then I'll type in pacman syu to update my packages and hit enter, enter my password. This is an Arch-based distro. We can upgrade our packages from here. There you go. So another thing that we can look at is the PAMAC software. So let's open the applications again and click Add Remove Software. Now here we have PAMAC version 5.9.12-1, which is the latest one. And by default here, you can install packages from the normal repositories. That means the core, extra, and community. Now by default, the AUR is not active here. So if I search for Spotify, for example, you can see that we don't have actually the Spotify app available. So let's have a look. Why is that? Let's click on preferences and enter our pseudo password here. And here we have the general options. We can automatically download updates or we can hide the tray icon when no updates are available. And under the advanced here, we have also some other configuration options. Now for the official repositories here, we are using right now worldwide, but you can refresh also the mirror list by just clicking this button here. And as you can see, the AUR support is right now deactivated. So we can activate this. And if you want to enable also snaps or flat packs, for example, we can enable these as well. So let's close this up. And you can see the repositories appear already here. So if I click AUR, now Spotify is already here available. Or if I click Flatpak, we have also the Flatpak version of it. So this is how you can enable also other repositories here in PAMAC. Now, this is actually coming with the kernel 5.9.11, as you can see on the top here. And I think this is the latest kernel available for Manjaro at the time of this recording. Because if I'm not mistaken, just yesterday, the kernel 5.9.12 was released. And I'm sure it's going to come to Manjaro very soon, probably in the coming days. Now, let me clean up the terminal here and type in here free dash h and see the memory usage. So this virtual machine has 8 gigabytes of RAM and you can see it's using right now 832 megabytes. So that's actually not too bad for a GNOME desktop environment, which is normally more resources hungry. So what we saw in the release note, it's absolutely true. We have a much better consumption of the RAM in this version of GNOME for Manjaro. Now I've installed this version of Manjaro on my laptop now, and I've been using it for a couple of days. And until now, I have to say, I really like it. It's very snappy. It's very polished. Now I haven't tried the XFC version of Manjaro 20.2 yet, but I'm going to try this very soon. However, I'm going to use this now for a while and see how it performs over time because with time the performance can change. So I'm curious to see how it will perform in the future. Now, if you're trying Manjaro 20.2, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'm always interested to know also your experiences with it and how it performs for you. And if you have any question about the video, let me know also in the comments below. As always, I will try to answer you as soon as I can. There you go, guys. This is Manjaro 20.2 Nivea, the GNOME version. I have to say, I really like this GNOME version of Manjaro. It's really polished and it's really fast. And it seems to be really the RAM consumption is much better. So if you try it out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it and what's your experience. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much again for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.